Welcome to a lesson on how to use the simplex method to solve a standard minimization problem. A standard minimization problem has non-negative variables and all the constraints are in this form here where they're greater than or equal to n and n is non-negative. Before we look at our example though, let's review the transpose of a matrix. A matrix formed by making the rows of a given matrix the columns of a new matrix is transposing a matrix. The new matrix using this notation here is called the transpose of matrix A or the given matrix. As an example, if this is matrix A, this would be the transpose of matrix A. Notice how row one becomes column one and row two becomes column two. To solve a standard minimization problem, we reconstruct the standard minimization problem into a standard maximization problem by converting it to what's called a dual problem. Then we solve the dual problem using the simplex method. The original minimum problem is called the primal problem and the corresponding maximum problem, as mentioned before, is called the dual problem. The maximum of the dual problem is also the minimum of the primal problem. However, the point at which they occur will be different. The solution to the maximum problem is found in the last column, as we already know, but the solution to the minimum problem is found in the last row of the same tableau. Let's look at an example and take this step by step. Here's our given standard minimization problem. Step one, we want to build a matrix out of the constraints and the objective function without slack variables. So we'll be using these first two inequalities and our objective function to create a three by three matrix. And the entries will be the coefficients from our inequalities and equation. So we'll only be using these first two constraints. So looking at the coefficients, we would have one, two, four, which make up the first row of our matrix. Looking at the second inequality, we have seven, six, twenty, which make up the second row. And then for our third row, we use our objective function, but we do want to change the order here. This is equivalent to 14s plus 20t equals c. So the coefficients are 14, 20, and one, which we see here in our third row. Step two, we want to find the transpose of this matrix. So if this is matrix A, this would be the transpose of matrix A. Again, notice how row one becomes column one, row two becomes column two, and row three becomes column three. This is the matrix that we'll use to set up the corresponding maximum problem or the dual problem. Step three, rewrite the constraints and objective function using this new matrix, which will give us our dual problem. So these first two rows will give us our constraints the third row will give us the objective function. So our first row will give us the constraint one x plus seven y less than or equal to fourteen, which we see here. Notice how because it's a maximum problem, the inequalities are less than or equal to. The second row gives us the inequality two x plus six y less than or equal to twenty. And our last row gives us the objective function four x plus twenty y equals, let's say, one p, or we can just say p equals four x plus twenty y. And now from here, we solve this using the simplex method as we normally do. So the next step, we write the constraints as equations and set the objective function equal to zero to form the initial tableau. Looking at our first constraint, we would have the equation x plus seven y plus s equals fourteen, where s is our slack variable. Second equation would be two x plus six y plus t equals twenty, where t is our slack variable. And then setting our objective function equal to zero, we'd have the equation negative four x minus twenty y plus p equals zero. To set up the initial tableau, We'll label the columns with the variables used, x, y, s, t, and p. And now we find the coefficients from the first, second, and third equations to complete the tableau. We have one x plus seven y 
plus 1s equals 14, so the coefficients for t and p are both zero. For the second equation, we have 2x plus 6y. There's no s term. The coefficient of t is one. There's no p term, and it equals 20. For the third row, we'd have negative four, negative 20. There are no s and t terms, so zero, zero, one, and zero. So this is our initial tableau, and we have these variables on the far left, which indicate the basic or active variables, which are the columns that contain only a one and zeros, which are s, t, and p. And we'll change these as the active or basic variables change. So here's our same tableau. To solve this using the simplex method, we want to identify the pivot column, which is the column with the most negative entry on the left of the bottom row, which would be this column here. So this is the pivot column. To find the pivot row and then identify the pivot, we form ratios using the constants on the far right and divide by the corresponding non-negative entries from the pivot column. So we'd have 14 divided by seven, that's two, and 20 divided by six, which is 10 thirds. The smallest ratio indicates the pivot row. Well, 10 thirds is about 3.3, .3, so two is smaller, so this would be the pivot row, making seven our pivot. So now we want to make the pivot equal to one, and the remaining entries in this column equal to zero. So if we wanted this entry to be one, we'd have to replace row one with one-seventh times row one, which I've already done to save some time. This row one came from finding the product of one-seventh and the original row one. So here's our pivot, and now we want six and negative 20 to be zero. So if we want six to be zero, we'll perform a row operation using row one. We could replace row two with negative one-six times row one plus row two. And to make negative 20 equal to zero, we could replace row three with 20 times row one plus row three. Notice once we perform these row operations, y will be active and s will become inactive or non-basic. So we'll label row one with y. I'm gonna go ahead and show how to perform these two row operations on the calculator. Of course, we could do them by hand, but then after this, I'll assume we can perform the needed row operations. So we first have negative six times row one plus row two. So we enter negative six, second open parenthesis. We enter the entries in row one separated by commas. So we have one seventh, comma one, comma one seventh, comma zero, comma zero, comma two. Second close parenthesis, and then plus row two. So plus second open parenthesis, two comma six, comma zero, comma one, comma zero, comma 20. Second close parenthesis, enter. We want fractions, not decimals, so we press math, enter, enter. We record our new entries. And now we're going to replace row three with 20 times row one plus row three. So 20 times row one again, so one seventh comma and so on. So there's 20 times row one plus row three. So we have negative four, comma, negative 20, comma zero, comma zero, comma one, comma zero. And enter. And math, enter, enter. These are the new entries for row three. Notice how this is not the final tableau because we still have this negative value here in the third row on the left side. So now we'll take this tableau, find the pivot, 
and perform another pivot operation. So the first column is the pivot column. And now we'll find our ratios to determine the pivot row. So the first row we'd have two divided by one seventh, which is two times seven or fourteen. The second row we'd have eight divided by eight sevenths, which equals eight times seven eighths, which is seven. The smallest ratio is seven, and therefore the pivot row is row two. So now our pivot is eight sevenths. So we want eight sevenths to be one, the remaining entries in this column to be zero. So to make eight sevenths equal to one, we'd multiply row two by the reciprocal of eight sevenths, which is seven eighths. So we'd replace row two with seven eighths times row two. And again, to save some time, I've already done this. Of course, I'd encourage you to verify this, but I have one zero negative three-fourths, seven-eighths, zero, and seven. Now that our pivot is equal to one, we want the remaining entries in this column to be zero. We want one-seventh to be zero, and negative eight-sevenths to be zero. Notice once we do this, x will be active, and t will no longer be active. So to make this one-seventh equal to zero, we could replace row one with negative one-seventh times row two plus row one. So we'll replace row one with negative one-seventh times row two plus row one. And then to make negative eight-sevenths equal to zero, we could replace row three with eight-sevenths times row two plus row three. And again, to save some time, I've already done this which I would encourage you to verify. For row one, I have zero, one, one-fourth, negative one-eighth, zero, one. For the new row three, I have zero, zero, two, one, one, forty-eight. Notice how I relabeled row two with x, our new active or basic variable. So here's our final tableau, which we know because Looking at the last row, there are no negatives on the left side. So from this tableau, the solution to the minimum will appear in the last row of the slack variables here and here. The minimized objective function value will appear in the last row, last column of this tableau, which is 48. This will be the same maximum of the dual problem. So let's summarize this on the next slide. Again, here was the original primal problem or minimization problem. And looking at the final tableau from the dual problem, we can find the solutions to both the dual problem and the primal problem. For the primal problem, the minimum of C is 48, and that occurs when S equals two and T equals one. So let's go ahead and record that. The minimum is C equals 48 at the point S comma T or two comma one. And for the dual problem or the maximization problem for review, the maximum is also 48. But looking at the active variables, this occurs when one Y or Y equals one and one X or X equals seven. So here we have a max of P equals 48 at X comma Y or seven comma one. Now before we go, I do want to take a look at solving the original minimization problem graphically. If we graph the constraints, this would be the feasible region, and then we would test the corner points or vertices of this region to determine the minimum of the objective function. Notice how the vertices are zero comma ten thirds, two comma one, and four comma zero. I've already performed the substitution here below, and notice how this does verify our results that we found using the simplex method. The minimum of C is 48, and that occurs at the point two comma one, or when S equals two and T equals one. I hope you found this helpful.